Welcome back. This is an Alex homework video on calculating an equilibrium composition after a prior equilibrium determines K. A little bit of a headache this question is. There's a lot to do. Uh, they ask a lot of you and they don't give you very much. Typical, I think. Uh, but let's just take it slow, slow and see what we can do. There's a lot that is given to you that you can figure out. So the first thing that I can do is I can make a balanced equation because it tells me what they're putting in, what gases they're putting in, what gases that they're getting. Okay, that's in the definition there at the top. So I know that carbon monoxide and water vapor gives me carbon dioxide gas and hydrogen gas. They give me some initial uh, pressures of the gases except for carbon dioxide. They make me find that. And then they're asking for you to find the K or the constant, the pressure constant, the equilibrium constant of this. And then the trick here is that if you have a new equilibrium, if you add, tweak some gases, if you add some gas or take some gas away, um, and it goes to equilibrium again, it's still going to be that same constant. So if you can find the equilibrium constant of the first time, and then the engineer adds, what in this case, 0.95 atmospheres more of carbon monoxide, it's going to reach equilibrium again. You do an ice table to find uh, the equilibrium, and the, the Ks are going to be the same. So once you find K for the first, you can use it for the second. At least that's easy. All right, so you know that the, the, the K sub P, the pressure constant for equilibrium here, is going to be the pressure of your um, products divided by the pressure, the products of the pressures of your reactants. All right, so I filled in everything that they gave me. I have the, con I have the pressure of the hydrogen gas. I have the pressure of the carbon monoxide and the... Uh, the water vapor at equilibrium. But what I don't have is the pressure of the carbon dioxide gas at equilibrium. So I'm going to go back and see, is there anything that I'm given? Okay, well, I'm, they put an initial carbon monoxide of 1.9. Okay, they, they put in an initial 1.9, but by the time it was at equilibrium, it was only 0.7. So what that means is some of that carbon that they put in for the carbon monoxide was turned into carbon dioxide. Okay, do you see that? So if you have 1.9 put in, but at equilibrium it was only 0.7, there's 1.2 atmospheres of gas missing because that carbon monoxide was turned into carbon dioxide gas. So when I go back to the balanced equation, it says it's one to one. For every one mole, or one atmosphere in this case of carbon monoxide that disappears, I'm going to have one mole of carbon dioxide that appears. So 1.9 minus 0.7 gives you 1.2 and that is my initial concentration of carbon dioxide. So they made me jump for that. So, that, so I figured it out, 1.2 and then I just filled it in. So 1.2 is the carbon dioxide plus the water divided by the carbon monoxide and the water vapor. That gives me a K sub P of 1.02857. All right, that's, that's my K. That K is going to stay around even though the engineer is going to monkey with this. It's going to add some more carbon monoxide gas and allow it to go to equilibrium again. So you're going to use that same uh, P or K sub P. All right, any time that you're doing um, an equilibrium, you have to do an ice table. The first time I did an ice table, I thought this was like the hardest thing in the world I could ever imagine. But then I just realized, oh, the first part, the carbon monoxide and water, is just the stuff at the beginning, and it's going away. And then the carbon dioxide and hydrogen is the stuff that's being made. It's being made. And since it's a one-to-one-to-one-to-one, -to -one -to -one -to -one, at least that part was easy, it's going away at one for every one that it comes away. So my ice table tells me all my numbers at equilibrium. So 1.6 minus x, 2.0 minus x, 1.2 plus x, 1.2 plus x. And then I just keep these organized as I can. 
So I just put them back into the case of P formula. 1.2 plus X is my carbon dioxide. 1.2 plus X is my hydrogen, etc. And then that's my P. Do you see that was my old P, but it sticks around because it's my equilibrium constant. And this is going to be a new equilibrium. All right, now for the algebra. This took me longer than anything just doing the algebra because this is a headache. And yes, you do have to use the quadratic, of course. So I simply just um, got everything to be positive, then put, uh, then uh, foiled it out. Okay, then I ended up with uh, x squared x's and, and numbers on both sides. Set them equal to zero and did the quadratic. Um, and then I realized that, of course, if you're going to do a quadratic formula, you're going to get two answers. The 215 can't work because my original, if you remember what your original question was, my original question had um, pressures of like to where if you were to subtract 215 from them, you would get a negative pressure and you can't have a negative pressure. So this one just, you just ignore the 215, it doesn't, doesn't work. So you're going to use the 0 0.318 um, as, your, as your, your new X and you're going to add that to your original pressure. So my initial pressure for the carbon dioxide was 1.2. My increase in pressure from the quadratic we just did was 0 0.318. I add them together, took two significant digits and this was my answer, 1.5 atmospheres. Okay, I would do this problem two times, three times at least to try to make some sense of it because there's a lot of steps, but I hope you're doing well.